published five years ago called The Virtue of Nationalism. And I, I hope it will be released. It, it's been translated into 20 languages. I hope it will be released in, in India as well. Because there are many, many very good questions to, to address to a nationalist, fair questions. Nationalism is not a utopian theory. It doesn't solve all the world's problems, which means there are always fair and reasonable questions to be asked. I wrote a whole book trying to answer them, and tonight I'll only be answer, able to answer a few. Uh, but if, if you want to read more, hear more than read the book. So the question is about Israel. Israel is obviously a, a, a country in the Middle East, and within its borders, we have, you know, depending, depending on where you draw the borders, uh, we have maybe 20% Arabs, almost all of them Muslim Arabs, although we also have Christians. Maybe 20% Arabs if you draw the borders one way. If you draw the borders another way, then you get up to 30, 30%, 35%. It depends how, how you draw, draw it. So how do you deal with this? Now look, in principle, there's no problem, there's no big problem with any nation adopting into the nation uh, a, a, a tribe or a group that is different from the majority. Okay, I mean, this is in, in, in Israel we have, uh, there's a, 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 small, a small nation, only a couple, a couple of million people called the Druze. And in Israel we have 300,000 Druze. So it's a small community. They can't become independent by themselves. And the Druze, since, since the founding of the State of Israel, the Druze have joined the Israeli army. We have photos from the 1950s where the, uh, the Druze units, they have their own, have their own military units, they have a Druze flag, a Druze national flag, and they put a Star of David, a Jewish symbol that they add to their Druze flag. That's not, we didn't add that, they added that. And these Druze, they are our brothers. When I serve in the army, when my children serve in the army, the Druze, every unit almost has Druze in it. But they're not Jews and they're not Muslims and not Christians. They have their own religion. The scholars say that their religion is partly Hindu, by the way. And uh, we, we feel to them a gratitude of a national group that does not have to fight our wars, but they say, no, we'll join and we'll fight together with you. We'll fight your wars with you. And as I said at the beginning, this part, this aspect of, of even where there are cultural differences, they can be overcome if there's loyalty. If there's loyalty, a willingness to join in every way to the faith and the history of the nation, then there isn't a great problem with someone being different. You can allow them to be different as long as they're loyal and part of the family. Okay, now we have, so, so there are, are, are various peoples in Israel, small peoples, who are like this. To our regret, the, the, the Muslim Arabs have not done this. Now, there, there are some Muslim Arabs every year in the hundreds. There are hundreds of Muslim Arabs who volunteer to join the Israeli army. And again, we treat them, they're, they're our brothers. The fact that they're Muslims is irrelevant. But the majority of the Muslim Israelis continue to be unsure about their place. Now, you can sympathize with this. You can sympathize. Because why? Because, because their, their cousins live in the West Bank, in Jordan, in Syria, in Iraq. Their actual family members live in the neighboring countries. Those neighboring countries have been at war with Israel. There's endless hatred spread about the Jews in those countries. And, and so the, the, uh, the Arabs in Israel, they are, they're unsure about their future. And I think, I, I, I think that, that we have to say, and here is a difference between liberalism and conservatism, liberalism and nationalism. A liberal will say, every individual is born free and equal. That's, that's, a, that's a, an axiom of, of the liberal worldview. Everyone is free and equal. That's why everyone can come and cross your border and come and live in your country, because everyone's 
free and everyone's equal. But we conservatives, we say, no, that's ridiculous. We can have equality among brothers. We can have equality among people who, who, who serve the same nation and rejoice over the same holidays and, and, and mourn over the same defeats. But we can't have perfect equality between two groups that are at war with each other. That's impossible. There's no way to do that. You can't say, we'll just give you anything you want and you'll keep attacking us. We'll give you land, we'll give you rights, we'll, we, you'll serve in the parliament, you'll serve in the courts, but you'll keep attacking us. We, that's, that's impossible, that's crazy. So there's no simple answer here. Every, um, every political system has its flaws. One of the flaws of, of nationalism, of independent nations, is that you, there's always a question about where to draw the borders. There's always a question about minority populations. And there's never, never an easy answer. But there is a difficult answer. The difficult answer is that each community in the nation has to decide where it stands. Where, where does their loyalty lie? And if their loyalty is with the, the, the majority, then we can be brothers. And if the loyalty, the loyalty is somewhere else, then we're not going to be brothers. Can I answer your question? 